Hey everyone, this is Lennon back with another Super Luminal Stardust tutorial. So for those of you who haven't heard of Stardust, it's a third party plugin you can download for After Effects from Superluminal.tv. And uh, Stardust is a fairly new plugin for After Effects. Um, it's got so many features and controls, and it's actually a node based particle system, which makes it pretty revolutionary. So, you guys will love working with this plugin, and hopefully, you guys really like this energy turbulence simulation we'll be creating today. I think it's pretty luscious, <laughs> but that's just me. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we're here in After Effects CC 2017. I'll go ahead and start by creating a new solid. I'll call this Stardust, and I always give away which effect I'm going to add, but that is Superluminal Stardust. Let's apply this to the layer, and I'll go ahead and drag this layer back so the simulation's already started, something like that. So if you've never used Stardust before, there's this node graph here, and if you don't see the node graph, you can go to Window and find the Stardust window. Just click that if you don't see it already. And now this is where all the nodes are going to be, and, then, and, and the nodes are not only helpful because you can just click a node and the settings are pop up over here in the effects controls but it's also completely necessary for cr for controlling the look of the particles all right so i'm going to go to the emitter here just click the emitter it should open up right here we can see this green line showing that the emitter is selected in the node graph pretty cool what we'll do is go to the emitter type and change this to box and here we have the dimensions or the sizes of the box what i'd like to do is turn the size y down to zero as well as the z that's important and we'll just increase the size X. We'll do something like uh, around 900. And uh, we got something pretty cool going on here. But what I want to do is turn down the speed all the way down to zero. And this is pretty important. A lot of times when you want to have a simulation, a controlled specific simulation, um, you have to turn down the speed because what the speed does is disperses the particles from your structure, from your, um, from your control. And we can't really control the particles when there's speed because like I said it just disperses and it makes the, everything chaotic. So we'll turn the speed all the way down to zero and we'll find more controlled ways to give motion to these particles. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I can do instead of adding speed to these particles, I'll drag in a force node. The force nodes are really cool. They're really simple ways to control the basic motion of the particle. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and attach this to, to the particle node. I'll bring the wind Y down to about 220, just like that, all right? So we're just giving more controlled motion to these particles, all right? So that looks pretty good. What I want to do is go up here and increase the number of particles, maybe to about 10,000, and just turn the particle size down here in the uh, particle controls. So will turn this down to about two. So that looks good for now. So, so you can see here that we just have this wall of particles moving upward and it's a really a tamed structure that we'll be able to manipulate. So what we're going to do is drag in a new node called a turbulence node and this is going to add the distortion, the cool stuff. So this is fun to play with. We'll go ahead and attach this after the force node and we'll turn up the position offset. We'll do about 300. Okay, so it disperses them really chaotically but what we'll do is go down here to the turbulence over life and just bring this down towards the beginning so when they're first born there's not much distortion later on the particles life they begin to be affected by the turbulence I'll actually increase the number of particles so I can see the turbulence better so we'll do about 80,000 yeah just like that so I can kind of visualize the turbulence much better so I want to increase the scale so the turbulence will be larger yeah that looks a lot better and uh, the rest of these settings are, look pretty good. So now what I want to do is play with a turbulence over life. So this is pretty important, and we got a lot of control over this turbulence with this um, with this particular parameter. So we'll go over here to the linear button. We'll click this until we see Bezier, and uh, we gotta have at least four points before there's any curves. So what I'll do is just bring it like this. So there's not much turbulence at the beginning, and then that suddenly at one point it kind of pops up and uh, you can kind of see what's going on. So I want something like this so there's not much distortion and suddenly particles just take action. Alright so hopefully this is making sense so far. Looks, that looks really good. Now this, this isn't going to look satisfying until we actually make this turbulence move with the motion of the particles, right? If it's just a static turbulence it just doesn't give that luscious feel if you know what I'm saying. And so what we got to do is go down here to the fractal offset Y and we want to move this fractal 
upward. All right, so let's go ahead and add an expression to this fractal offset y. Hold alternate, click the stopwatch, and we'll type in time times, and we'll do about 20 times less than the uh, wind speed. All right, so now this fractal distortion is going to move with the particles. Now we're getting that nice, as I like to say, luscious feel. Wonderful. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now there's definitely some fine tuning adjustments we need to make, but I'm going to go ahead and reveal the secret of how we're going to turn this into a radial structure rather than a flat linear one. This is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and reveal this to you guys. So I know some of you are probably thinking polar coordinates, but no, we're going to create this real radial 3D geometry. We're going to do this the real way, right? So how we're going to do this is with a field node and this this allows us to begin adjusting more of the general structure of these particles and if you hover over the node here we see that it says add deformers to manipulate the particle position that's basically what it does it's a pretty complicated powerful node so that's why we're learning how to use it all right we'll go to the field type and instead of doing sphere we'll choose bend aha maybe you guys get what's going to happen now so what we can do is increase the bend amount it's going to begin to bend the entire structure of the particles. That's really cool, but you can see we're actually bending in the wrong axis. For the axis, we'll choose axis Y. And there we go, that's exactly what we wanted. And uh, we need to make it bend from the right anchor point so that it meets in the middle. So we'll grab the origin X, Y and move this up. Before I completely fine tune that value, I want to turn the bend amount right so that I don't have to go back and adjust it again. So yes. Yeah, Something like that looks good. Now I just need to fine tune that um, origin adjustment. There we go. Perfect. Look how luscious this is. We get to see the full dynamic turbulence with this radial structure. I love it. So now, now that we revealed how all the tricks and the techniques of this simulation, we can go through and make this these fine tune adjustments and like make this look pretty. So I'll go to the particle parameters and I'll change the opacity down to 50. Looking really good. And I also want to go to the over life and the particle effect and go to the size. And I'll bring this down. We'll choose Bezier. Make at least four points to have that curve in there. We'll make something like this but then we'll hit this Bezier button again and it'll change to draw. Now we can just draw specifically what exactly we want. And we're going to make this flicker towards the end a little bit. So that should be pretty good right there and what this is going to do is add this um, wave to the ends and it's going to add this real pulsing energy feel so that, that's a really cool technique look at that this is, and, and what's so beautiful about this is how the distortion just lusciously integrates and follows the motion of the particles so that's what's so lovely about this simulation and, and, and that's probably what didn't make sense to a lot of people who first viewed this is how in the world this turbulence is following the particles in every direction. Alright, so we're pretty much finished with all the Stardust adjustments. So now we're just going to do a little magic in After Effects to give life to this effect. So, um, what I want to do is try to make this look more like energy instead of particles, right? And uh, I'll go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. Add a Gaussian Blur. And this will help kind of blend them together a little bit. So I'll do about 4 pixels of blur and then I'll add a median effect and this is gonna help like with the Gaussian blur blend the particles together but it's gonna keep the sharp edges so median is actually a really cool effect but it's not gonna work with transparency unless we check this option here we need to fill in the transparency anyway so I'll go ahead and add a solid composite before the median effect and uh, fill this in with black just like this so we can kinda see what the median effect does keeps those sharp edges but it helps blend things together looking really nice and now what I'd like to do is add just a little bit of vector blur to kind of squeeze the highlights so we'll do about two or three yeah just like that I'll change this to maybe 19 doesn't really matter that much alright so now we have this more liquid energy feel um but see I still want to find a happy medium because if we go back to the previous this looks sharp and just crisp so I like that feel the original one gives but I also like the blended energy feel of this so we gotta find a happy medium. So we, what we can do is maybe turn down the opacity. But that doesn't look too good because then we have these like dusty particles. That just doesn't look too good to me. So we'll turn this back up to 100. And I found what's well, a good idea is to add a um, screen blending mode. And that just blends them in. So now we have this nice energetic fluid feel. 
but also it has that sharp look. So that's that was a nice um, compromise, I think. All right, so this is looking really good. So now it's time to really add some life to this effect with some color and glow. So to do that, I'll create a new adjustment layer. Remember, we already applied this solid composite effect, so there's no transparency, so we're ready to go ahead and add these colors. So to add the original tint, I'll just apply a curve adjustment. And let's go ahead and bring up the blue. And uh, I want to bring down the red so it leaves a little of the cyan colors in there. Yeah, just like that. And we can add a little contrast with the green, adding more green to the highlights, but bringing it down in the shadows. All right, so we got this nice contrast in colors, more of the cyans and blues blends really well together. All right, that looks really nice, but now we need to add some glow. So we'll add our first glow effect. We'll turn the glow threshold up to about 75. The radius can be about 75 as well. Turn the glow operation to screen. Let's add our own custom colors. So for the glow colors, we'll choose colors A and B. And for the color looping, let's do A is greater than B. For color B, we'll choose more of a blue color. And for the highlights, we'll do more of a bright cyan. Alrighty, that looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and duplicate this glow. And we'll make more of a broad expanded glow. So we'll turn the glow threshold down to about 25 color B can be more of a rich darker blue we'll do the same for color A just make this these a little more vibrant and now I want to turn the glow radius up to about 200 like I said more of a broad expanding glow definitely adds the life to the simulation and also when you're working with these glows you want to make sure you're working in 32 or 16 bits per channel um, and what that does it just adds more increments of color levels so it can have a smoother fade out and less of a choppy fade out all right, and one really good technique, um, if you still see some kind of choppy lines here where the glow fades out, what we can do is add a grain effect. So add grain, we'll apply this after all the glows, we'll change the viewing mode from preview to final output. And you can see here it gets rid of those lines, but now we have just too much grain, so I like to turn the intensity down to about 0.1. Yeah, so now we don't have those lines, the grain really just helps it fade out cleanly. Alright, so I want to make an adjustment to these edges. We're going to add some distortion just to give more of an energy feel. So what I'll do is create a new adjustment layer. We'll put this uh, above the fluids. We'll call this edge distortion. And uh, let's go ahead and apply a turbulent displace effect. Alright, we'll apply that to the new adjustment layer we just made. And uh, let's turn the size down to about 75. The amount can come down to about 25. And the complexity, we'll turn this way up to about 8. We get this real cool distortion look. And what I want to do is animate the evolution. So I'll hold alternate and click the stopwatch on the evolution parameter. And we'll type in time times oh, 300. Okay, so like I said, this is edge distortion. So I only want it to apply to the edge. So what I'll do is go to the mask shape tools and click on the ellipse tool. Then we'll just double click on it. And let's go down here to the mask parameters. And we'll change this to subtract. We'll change the mask expansion down so it gets more of the edges yeah something like that then we'll just add a little bit of feather maybe 50 pixels of feather and we have some cool edge distortion alright so we're pretty much finished but there is one last thing I'd like to do to this effect so it's always good to have different types of particles here we have kind of fluid particles but we're gonna add some variation add some larger particles that's a really good idea so we could either drag in a new particle node to this one particular system and attach it to the emitter. But we're not going to do that because we don't want these larger particles to be affected by the edge distortion and the fluid adjustments and effects. So we won't apply it to this system. What we'll do is just duplicate the Stardust layer, put it above the adjustment layers. Just keep it so low like that. And we'll turn down the particles per second to maybe around 100, not very many at all. And let's go to the particle settings, go to particle properties, and change the size to about 3.5. The size random can be about 50. So we got some nice particles there. I don't like how they're so small around the edges, so we can go to the over life settings, go to the size, and go to the presets. We can just select default here to start from scratch. Let's go to the draw mode, and we can just make it kind of flicker out here at the end, so... Yeah, something like that. Make it get averagely smaller towards the end of its life. We don't want it to be too small. It seems to look pretty good. I also want to add some random to the life or duration of each particle. So we'll do about 35. So some particles will last a little bit longer and some will die out quicker. Alright, and we want to be sure to turn the opacity of these particles all the way up to 100 so they'll be completely bright and visible. And they'll probably blend in a little bit better if we add some particle feathers. So we'll turn this up to somewhere between 20 and 30. 
All right, that should look pretty good. And also, remember that we can go to the render settings of the Stardust and go to the motion blur, turn on motion blur. I also just change the random seed of the emitter. So they won't be in the same place as some of these particles, even though there's so many you probably couldn't tell, but just to be safe. It's always good to be safe. We can also add some motion blur to these particles. So we'll go to the render settings, turn on motion blur. And sometimes if the motion blur is too rough on your system, you can turn down the samples per frame and this will make it easier on your system to render this out and we could also do less motion blur all right everyone that's a wrap for this tutorial we've completed this effect everyone has their own opinion but i absolutely love the way this effect looks and feels so wonderful so if you guys have like a vision to be creative in your visual effects work stardust is a good place to start uh, be sure to at least get the free trial of this plugin and have fun. I've definitely had fun making this effect and going over this tutorial with you guys. My name is Lyndon from Visionary Universe, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.